Hi everyone, here's the Bukemich once again, long time no see. I was busy the last few weeks settling down in my new flat in England. I'm finally here. If my skin looks a bit yellowish, it's not because of the bad lights in my flat, it's because of the English food I've been eating for the last 15 days. Did you know that all the stereotypes about English food being gross are all absolutely 100% true? It really sucks a lot. I lived here one year in the past, but back then I lived off like takeaway food but when you try to live like an adult in England uh, it gets really difficult because I mean I, I understand I, I wasn't expecting good lasagna or good bolognese or ragu but really when the tuna from the can or like the uh, like the green beans and the peas and the carrots all to taste like nothing uh, there's there's something wrong there someplace I like rice pudding I rice I like rice pudding a lot it's it's really delicious I mean, it's basically overboiled rice uh, soaked in sugar, but uh, it's fine, it's, it's very good. Anyway, enough digging around. Today I'm reviewing a book I actually read for the first time uh, when I got to England for the first time. I was reading it when I came to Birmingham for my year as a foreign student, as an Erasmus student. And uh, it was a crazy time, and because of that I didn't remember very much of the book. Uh, I remember parts of the plot, but that was pretty much it, so this rereading was really needed. And fun fact, I, I reread it uh, when I got back to England last week. That's fun, I guess. I'm talking about Vineland by Thomas Pynchon. Universally acknowledged by lots of people as Thomas Pynchon's worst novel. I shit you not, Harold Bloom, the prominent literary critic who is a huge Pynchon fan, actually said that Vineland was not only a tragedy, a literary tragedy, but the biggest literary tragedy of our times, and he couldn't find any redeeming page, not even a redeeming sentence in the whole thing. Which is a, a bit of an exaggeration and a very Harold Bloom thing to say. By the way, what do you think is the greatest liter literary tragedy of our times? That's a fun question, I might film a video about it. Seems fun to discuss. And Harold Bloom is not alone. A lot of people tend to dismiss or downplay the book by focusing on how funny and hilarious it is, by focusing on just that side of the book. Like the, the cover of my edition of Vineland, which is by the way the least imaginative cover in the history of literature, says that the book is exhilarating and wretchedly funny. Uh, David Foster Wallace famously said that he was disappointed in the book. Really, Dave? and that it felt as if Pynchon had retreated into the woods for 20 years to smoke pot, and the book was the result of that. Uh, on the back of my edition you get uh, opinions like uh, funny, or one of the funniest books I've read by a living author, by a third and Michael Bracewell, who works or worked for Time Out, which really begs the question. What the fucking book did all of these people read? Seriously. Like, seriously, did their edition of the book stop at page 13? Violent is not funny at all, it's not exhilarating, it's actually quite fucking depressive. Depressing. And also, like, disturbing a little bit in some parts. There's a lot of silly humor, very Pinchonian humor, just as in any other Pinchon novel, uh, but that's mostly in the first part of the book, in the very first chapters, and some play, and, like, there's some of it also in the middle of it, but most of the book, most of it, is a very bitter reflection on the fall of the 60s, of that cultural and social and why not even political revolution that were the 60s on the west coast in america in general we could say in the western world in general and in particular vineland is a reflection upon our popular culture especially television uh the media like the big media helped that revolution to fail how the uh like the the intersection between popular culture and counterculture eventually turned out lethal for counterculture. Now, all of that is very interesting, but it's also mambo-jumbo. What's important for readers to know is that I don't really think that this is a funny or exhilarating book at all. As I said, it's very bitter, and you understand that Pynchon is very... very is, is pained, that he is miserable at how the whole enterprise of the 60s turned out, and he, he projects a very bitter view on contemporary America, on post-Nixon, Reaganomics America, and on the America that will follow those years. And as I said, some of the passages in here are quite disturbing, not the disturbance of Gravity's Rainbow, of the whole mix of pornography and perversion you find there, but more because of the 
sheer evil nature of some of these characters, most notably Brock Vond, which might really be the most evil Pinchonian antagonist in all of his production, and because of the way at the same time you realize how to express some of the views of their time, some views that were shared by millions of people and that are still shared in today's world by millions of people, views on topics such as uh, social liberties, such as uh, the welfare state, such as whether some substances or others should be illegal, uh, to what extent can the government control the freedom of the individual, all of these things. Talking about characters, Pynchon famously writes very fragmented novels, but Vineland is, among his, the one in which you can find a least recognizable main character. Even, uh, I mean, as much as in Gravity's Rainbow, even more than books like Against the Day. In here there is no main character, and since the narrative is very dense, but not very long, what actually happens throughout most of the novel is that you get one character's story, and then you move to another one, and then you move to another one, and then you move to another one, but you don't really get back to the first two to previous characters. They keep coming up in the plot, but you focus on each one of them one at a time which is good in some ways, because some of their stories are, of course, as good as only Pynchon can create them. Some, uh, it's not as good because you don't grow with the characters in ways you do when you read books such as, of course, Against the Day, of, of course, Mason and Dixon, those kind of Pinchonian novels. Also, while some of the characters, like Takeshi and DL, which are my personal favorite, are compelling and their stories are both entertaining as fuck and very interesting and very deep, some others feel a bit emptier than Pynchon usually uh, like makes you used to. Um, this is the one Pynchon novel, more than any other, in which this seems like a novel of ideas. Uh, in a novel in which Pynchon wanted to talk about the 60s, about their downfall, about the causes of that, and build a story around that. I'm sure that's not at all the way he proceeded, it just feels like that at times. An example of that is of course Brock Vond, of which, which I already mentioned, this, um, this antagonist, this main antagonist in the novel, which really does not feel like a human being at all. Uh, Pynchon will do a much better job uh, portraying people like that, people serving as a determinate ideology which makes them evil without making them overtly so, making them evil in a believable way. He will do a much better job at that in Bleeding Edge, most notably, with the character of uh, Windust. Windust in Bleeding Edge is a perfect example of that. It probably doesn't sound as if I'm too enthusiastic about this book, but it's not like that. There are some scenes in here which are pure gold, at the same time, I think I might subscribe to the general view that this could be considered Pynchon's weakest novel. Um, the way it portrays the end of the 60s, uh, the end of that era, the downfall of that revolution, is portrayed in a more entertaining, more emotional, in a better way, I'd say, in inherent vice. As I said, his reflection on the nature of evil, whether people, agents of a specific or another government are evil or the system is, is uh, like, is inquired and is explored much better in Bleeding Edge. Which of course leads us to the vital question. Do I recommend rice pudding to you guys? I do. Taste rice pudding, it's really good. It doesn't really have a taste, it tastes like sugar, but like, it's a good experience. A as good as you can get if you live in England. Um, do I recommend Vineland by Thomas Pynchon? That's a tougher question, because actually I would r I, I'm not sure I would recommend it to Pynchon fans unless they feel like real completionists and they want to have a, uh, like a clear and total understanding of his whole production. Paradoxically enough, I might just recommend it to people who have never read Thomas Pynchon before, because it's more entertaining than some other of his books, it's probably more entertaining and has more of a plot than, say, The Crying of Lot 49, and it is 100% Pynchonian, so it will get you used to Pynchon's style and, like, uh, techniques and vibe and the way he portrays his characters and all those things. At the same time, it's not as short as it might look and it is very, very dense, and I would probably still suggest people to begin with Inherent Vice, or maybe Bleeding Edge, or anyway, someplace else. It's not... it's a weird book. Its problem is that it's surrounded by huge masterpieces of siblings, but that's not his fault. 
it's a good read. If you're interested in the topic of the 60s, in the way popular culture influences culture at large for the worse, this is the book for you. And of course, it's Thomas Pynchon, so it's it's like his not the best is better than most stuff you read around. What do you think about Vineland? I've read a contra like opposite opinions online. There's people who love this book, there's people who hate it. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys. <laughs>